Okay, so it's been a minute since the last time I updated. I apologize. Um, we've had people in and out, you know, critiquing us on our work. Mostly me. <laughs> mostly my work. Mo mostly my work. Um, but we've got heads on. Zach's working on valves. Um, also, whenever you do put these heads on, make sure you clean all your surfaces where your gaskets are going to be. So, you know, clean where your head gasket is going to be. Clean your exhaust gaskets. Uh, clean them up. Just wire wheel it. It's just the easiest way to do it. I'm working on the intake. Uh, that is an Edelbrock Performer EPS, right? Yeah, so that's an EPS. Um, I guess that one is more for fuel mileage, I guess you could say. Uh, better than the RPM, right? No? No. Okay, well, what is the difference anyways? Okay, so, yeah, the EPS is more economy, RPM is more performance, which makes sense. So, yeah, just don't forget to clean all your surfaces. And, uh, yeah, we're gonna have to turn the motor over so we can, so Zach can finish up valves, get them all set. But we're getting pretty close to putting this back back in the blazer the only thing we're missing um we got to get the valve covers and what else air breather, yeah. air breather and uh the shifter because i'm taking out no uh, you need the the the, the rod there's a plate yes we'll pull this plate off and then there's another one that has the hole cut oh uh, okay so yeah, so we'll have to grab the fuel pump mounting plate, the valve covers, and my air breather because I bought off that all of that off of Keiko. And then uh, she's going to go back in, and hopefully we can get this running tomorrow. I think Keiko's going to come down tomorrow, right, and bring all that stuff for us. So I'm excited. Um, yeah, yeah. Also, when you do this and you go carburetor, you don't need any of the wiring that connects to your computer. Uh, the computer runs through this hole right here. Uh, the wiring harness does. So you can get up in there. I'll actually show you that here in just a minute, but uh, you basically get up in there and it's up underneath the um, heater box, blower motor in that general area. You gotta unbolt it. But basically all you're keeping is your alternator wiring. Yeah, you gotta keep. Yeah, the big red wires. Yeah. Um, anything that goes to your own there, you'll keep. And you got your starter wire, which is purple, thick purple wire. You want to keep this junction block because if you do not keep these wires, so this thing's not going to crank or have power inside. Thick pink wire, that's your ignition to your distributor. And then we also, uh, this is my tack because we had already had that in. Um, but yeah, and then of course, oil pressure. As far as transmission wiring goes, I have no idea. I don't deal with automatics. I left what was I left what wiring was there. I, the only wire that got cut was this one that went to I think the computer. So it's probably now useless, but it's still there. <laughs> but as far as I can, as far as I know, so there's we don't know if this is an actual. 91 700 R4. The only thing we know is it's a 700 R4. Uh, but I guess the only thing that connects with the computer on this is the ECC. I can't remember exactly what it's called, but it's, it's basically just a torque converter lockout. Um, you can buy what's it called? Valve uh, bodies that um, keep it in lockout at all times, but they're like $250. Uh, but as far as I can tell from what I've read, uh, you can drive it and it's not gonna hurt anything. You just, it's just not gonna give you, I believe overdrive, but this thing doesn't run in overdrive anyway. So it's, an, it's a pointless for me to even buy that because this thing doesn't like overdrive anyways. Um, it might now because it makes 
Um, it's going to make a lot more power. Well, I say a lot more, but it's going to make more power. But I mean, 100 horse is getting a lot more. Yeah, I mean, 100 over what I had is going to help a lot. Um, so. I mean, we're just making assumptions. We have no idea what it'll yeah. really make. But 300 crank, that's a safe guess. With the heads that we got. Yeah, with the heads and the cam, and especially the carburetor, flat tops. and flat tops, and the intake. Um, the low ball is 300, and I'm pretty sure that's a low ball. I'm leaning more towards 350, but the low ball end is 300. So we're gonna get to doing what all we can with what we have, and then we'll probably pick up tomorrow doing, uh, putting it in and hopefully getting this thing running. So we'll see you then. I've gotten way farther than I wanted to before an update, but I uh, painted everything and uh, we painted her black and it looks way better than that baby puke blue. But uh, headers on, car or distributors in, uh, your boy's working on the last bit of the harness. And then we're going to put this bad boy back where it goes and hopefully never have to take it out again until, you know. Maybe one day I'll put an LS, but I got one for you. Yeah, I yeah he does. He has a you have a block for and me. Heads. Do you? And the EFI intake. Oh, okay. So maybe I don't have to buy as much as I thought to do that. But regardless, it'll still be a while before I get that far. <sighs> huh? So I ain't doing this again. Well, I'm not asking you to. Um, it won't be nearly as hard because I literally just pull this one out, put that one in, kind of thing. But anyway, we're going to get to finishing that and then throw this in here and that'll be it for, for us for the evening because it is getting kind of late. It is 7.30. Yeah. So we're going to finish this up tomorrow and hopefully the next thing you see will be us uh, getting ready to fire it. So fingers crossed. Okay, motor is in, thank God. Now we have to work on fuel pump, which, sad face, I don't have the fitting for that, so that'll be an issue. We'll deal with that at a later date, mostly later time. Uh, Teko's gonna do some wiring, which won't be that bad because he's already got all the wiring done, it's just this to my fans. And uh, what else are we gonna do? I mean, other than everything. <laughs> Everything. Yeah, just just everything, but uh, we're gonna work on carburetor. Probably gonna end up RTVing that because the gaskets that came with the rebuild kit are not uh, the correct ones, so that's lit. Yeah, these um, ones are meant for the holes that would be on the inside, like the inside. Holes. Yeah. Sad, but we'll make it work. Hole. We'll make it work, and. Uh, I think we're going to get to hopefully front accessories, get those on, get the radiator uh, back in in the front front clip. Basically get everything done other than that unless I can find a fitting. Um, maybe there's one in here, I don't know. But we're going to get to working on that and then when we get a little bit farther, I'll show you the progress we have made so far. Okay, we're back. Um, like I said, we've got everything on. We got the radiator in. We got it all put together, ready to go. Um, we got fuel. I'm gonna break this uh, line on the back of my oil gauge, and uh, we got a fresh battery, and well, charged battery, anyways. Not a new one, but you know, we'll uh, we'll see if she does anything so I'm gonna set y'all up and uh, see if we can accomplish anything today.
I'm gonna be honest. I don't think this battery has enough crank amps. So that's great. Love that. I'm gonna try to jump pack. Maybe it helps. I'm really beginning to think that it's this battery or it's the starter because um, it is a starter off of the 4.3 that was in this thing so I could have swore I still had a V8 starter somewhere but I'm going to do some tinkering and see if I can't fix it. So it's uh, been another long day of failures. Um, apologize for not recording. I was just severely focused on trying to get this thing to start and it just will not. Um, my grandpa says that it's not getting enough spark. So I changed the coil um, and I got more spark. Um, but it's still not enough. So we sanded the points down. We did all this and that. And then finally he was like, I'm going to go get some starter fluid. So he did. And he said, Brady, ether takes away two out of the three things you need. He said, it takes away the fuel problem. And air is just, it just takes that away as well. So he said, if it's not firing on ether, you've got a firing problem. So, by God, he had sprayed it enough in there that it, it was trying to lock the motor up on ether. He said, you have a fire problem. So I was like, I, I'm at a loss. I, I don't know how to fix it. Um, and he also said that uh, it's just not spinning fast enough, which that definitely, because it does have the 4.3 starter still on it so I think Zach's gonna bring the V8 starter tomorrow and hopefully we can get this thing spinning fast enough to run but I don't know so that'll do it for this hopefully in the next video we'll have this thing dialed and, it, and, and it's running um, but we shall see. I feel very defeated. So, you know. Anyway, if you haven't already, like, comment, subscribe, and uh, see you in the next one.